DJ International TV is house. The history here is um, is immense because when this all really started, um, it started with a trip to New York and New Jersey. New York and New Jersey, same thing. And Zanzibar was the place. Yes. <laughs> and, it were, and it was your place. Yes, yes, yes. I ran Club Zanzibar, Club 88, and also Club America. And I brought in the, anybody that Marsha Jefferson gave me the name of that wanted to come to New Jersey to perform at Club Zanzibar. I sent them plane tickets and gave them hotel accommodations and paid them very well to perform at not only Club Zanzibar, but with Tony Humphreys, but we also put them on the radio, 98.7 KISS FM, and we blasted all throughout the uh, metropolitan area. All their songs that were hot at the time and uh, the names of the groups, and we made sure that everybody got as much promo as possible. Yeah. So, so the real deal is, um, my experience, and this is my account of it, yeah. is before Marshall went there, That's true. it was Music is the Key, J.M. Silk. Silk. Yep. And I remember the day we got off the airplane, mm -hmm. it was uh, Keith, uh, uh, Steve and myself, yes. we got off the airplane, in the taxi ride, we heard I was either BLS or, or one of the stations were playing their song. Right. And we couldn't believe it. We actually got a kick. I mean, it's like a classic scene. Right. And you're the guy who did it. Mm, thank you. Thank you. J.M. Silk, Steve, and everybody. And Keith, yeah, it was good. I used to cut the commercials. I was the only promoter uh, that was allowed to cut commercials for uh, Club Zanzibar Rocks tonight. Tonight, J.M. Silk live with Marshall Jefferson and Ten City Rock in the house. Be there. So, so, I mean, I mean the, the fact that, uh, I mean, it's almost like a movie, I'm telling you, man, when, when the boys heard themselves on it, they were all, we were all taken back, but they were like, really thrilled because it, you know, it was their record. And, uh, and the fact they were playing with, uh, with, we met some huge people down in your club. I mean, you had uh, everybody down there. Yes, yes. So you mentioned some of the names you brought in. Well, and uh, by the way, when he brought them in, they were there was no second-rate treatment. This was major stuff. They had they had fruit, everything there. They they, they didn't cut no corners, and that was in the honor of house music. Um, I mean, he did it with everything, but but the fact that it was the first group and all that just and our first time it made huge sense. And well, what happened was uh, I was doing a college night on Thursday nights. And uh, J.M. Silk was brought to my attention by uh, my associate who was promoting the college night. And that's how uh, I brought in J.M. Silk to uh, Club 88 and the sister club, Club Zanzibar, which was at that time run by Albert Murphy. And he was the one with all the fruit bowls and everything like that and all the warm accommodation. Albert Murphy is the genius of Club Zanzibar who actually kicked off Club Zanzibar in 1979. And I followed in his footsteps and tried to do the best that I can to continue, continue the legacy. But uh, in fact, uh, J.M. Silk was the first house artist that we brought in from Chicago. And then after that, uh, Marshall Jefferson and the doors, the floor, the doors opened to, I brought in Joe Smooth, Xavier Gold, uh, who else was it? Kim Mizell, sure. everybody was there. Everybody who wanted to come. Joe Smooth, uh, he did promise that. I have a videotape actually of Joe Smooth, Xavier, M M M Xavier Gold, Gold right. uh, Ten City, C.C. Rogers, Sybil, I have, it was the 8th anniversary of Club Zanzibar and I wanted 8 acts and I have 8 acts performing and I have it on videotape and I'm willing to share it with you. Are you really? I Absolutely. was going to say that is, that is so I've important. I've been holding it for so long for the special moment. And really. It, you know what, can I say what, the, the, yeah. I mean, of all the appearances, I'm going to say this, Paradise Garage uh -huh. and uh, and uh, the club Bruce Forrest was playing at Brother Days and all that. Yeah, Bruce Forrest is yeah. my man, yes. But, 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 but your clubs are the ones that that was more real to me, not that they weren't real clubs, it was a phenomenal club, but the fact that you're New Jersey, you're you're, you're not New York City, you know, and, and even though you are, it, it just meant more to me, it really did, because it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, the glitz and glamour uh, that you can get caught up in New York City playing it, mm -hmm. but this was the real world, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's not, it's never changed. Well, we were very personal. In Jersey, we take it personally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we give 110. I remember, I remember meeting uh, um, uh, Tony Humphreys down there. Yes, and Tony Humphreys is the man. Yeah, absolutely. He's Mr. Zanzibar, Mr. Club Zanzibar, as a matter of fact. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, and, uh, and that, also, also, you know, Larry Levan played at Club Zanzibar along with David Morales and uh, Little, Little, Little Louis Vega. And, How uh, huge. Larry Patterson kicked it off, and there's, uh, Hippie Torales was the original DJ there. And it's just, it's just a beautiful thing, yeah. So, so we're at, uh, at the House of Blues in Chicago That's for... Right. 
Byron Stingley's birthday. And I birthday. flew in from Japan to be here. And listen, flew in from Japan. Japan, Just by the way, here. geographically is nowhere near Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's yeah. got to be what? Uh, that's got to be a nine-hour, twelve-hour uh, 12 flight. Hours. Twelve hours. Twelve-hour flight. Twelve, thirteen hours. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, how appropriate is that? So. So, did they know you're here yet? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I good. let Byron know I was coming. You know, I had to let him know. It's, the only reason I'm here is because, you know, I had to be here. You know, it's the 50th birthday party or a celebration and the reunion. I haven't seen them uh, together perform in so, so many years and I had seen them so many times perform together. So, I had to be here and uh, I saw them warming up downstairs for a uh, sound check and it was just very moving. Yeah. Moving, moving to, yeah, Spiritually uh, to me, yeah. Spiritually, that, yes, that's the key feeling, thing. Yes, spirit, yes. Touching my spirit. Yeah. yeah. They they had, um, uh, we had the good fortune of uh, the street ceremony in Chicago last summer, and uh, it was really nice because those guys hadn't seen each other. I don't know how long they hadn't seen each other, but they hadn't performed yeah. in a long time. Yeah. And they got up on stage on the street, and they started singing together, and it was it was a spiritual moment. Right. And uh, uh, what's happening now is uh, going to be, uh, Major history, mm. and I'm holding you to that videotape, by the way, because that. Believe me, listen, it's out there. I'm a man of my word. I'm a Jersey guy. So what are you, what are you doing now in the, in uh, Japan? Well, I, I work customer relations out there. Yeah. The club, yeah, club? still relative. Yes, yeah, still relative to the entertainment business. Here. My God, why don't you open up a club in Chicago? It'd be so welcome. Trust well, me. Maybe that could happen. Yeah, yes. that could be. That Thank could you be. Very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So uh, what else can we say? I want to think. Um, you know who's down at your club? This I always remember this because I ran into him at the at the Four Seasons uh, about ten years ago. Um, I ran to um, right, and he was like a kid, but he was on the bill. I think the week after, the week before that, James Silk was there. Right, right, right. Al Murphy brought uh, uh, those folks in. Also, he brought in uh, Sugar Hill Gang and all those Cool in the Gang. Everybody performed there at one time or another in the beginning. That was before my time. James but the, the transition was when uh, I, brought, I called him for JM Silk. That was yeah. the transition in '86. Yes, absolutely. So, so I mean, tell us a little bit about your history of those clubs, because that's that. I mean, we know when we walked in, but you were set up long before that. Yeah. Well, I was the club director of Club 88 New Stars, which is owned by the same uh, organization that owned Club Zanzibar. And when there was a management change at Club Zanzibar, I was asked to take over Club Zanzibar and the rest is history. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, I, so put, I put Club Zanzibar on the radio. They didn't have radio commercials too much then, and I was fortunate enough to be able to cut the commercials myself and uh, work closely with 98.7 KISS FM and WBLS. And, uh, See, we were out there. what he's talking about is he's talking about the real street flavor, the real street uh, underground scene. Um, and luckily, he captivated it on a mass market scale. But well, you know, you everyone knows about the uh, uh, Larry Levan and the Paradise Garage, and probably the greatest club of all time. But for understanding that, what the real deal in the side element is, Club Zanzibar and your clubs. I mean, that that's that's you know, you got better days. You got you know, the tunnel, which came much later, I think. Well, the relative thing to uh, uh, say about Club Zanzibar and Club Paradise Garage is that they both uh, had the sound systems done by Richard Long and Associates and the lights. So it's a very much a sister club. Chaka Khan would perform at the Paradise Garage and Club Zanzibar only at that time. She would only do tracks at those two clubs. And Zanzibar would be at 5 o'clock in the morning, then she'd leave and go do a 9 o'clock show at Club, at club uh, Paradise Garage with Larry Levin. Yeah. There's nothing like New York and, and New Jersey. When I say New York, I mean, it's across the street in New Jersey, so it's not like it's you know Chicago, Milwaukee, no. It's the same town in my, my opinion, right? So, so when you see that, uh, that experience, uh, it's so unique, and that's why Chicago and every, the whole world knows what that's about and uh, how important New York is. So we were so humbled and excited about being there. All right, well, and, my uh, pleasure. And so you're going to introduce us to some of your friends as I'm, well. I'm glad to be a part of history. Oh, no, no, no. This is music history. Yeah, yeah, we're club in, music. Actually, we're in C.C. Pennison's dressing room at this time. Oh my God, and, uh, you're still right there? Well, you know what, at I this time I'm going, to, I'm going to, uh, she wants to come over and meet you and have a photo with you, so she's taking a photo right now. I think she'll be over here in a moment, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How great is that? We see Tennyson, finally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, no. I'm Billy Press, uh, former director of Club Zanzibar in Newark, New Jersey. Rocky Jones, and I'm with the family of the house.